Thank you, Mr. Shah, for your pertinent and insightful comments. Your presence here is for SIPA a very appreciated incentive. Once more, on behalf of the members of SIPA, I thank you for joining us this morning. Now, our rapporteur, uh, Professor Susan Woodward, will present some, con some contents of the 10th meeting report to your knowledge and consideration, His Excellency, and to your knowledge and analysis, distinguished SIPA members. Susan, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, let me begin by telling the, the members that the report, I hope, will be done by the end of next week. And as we did in last, week, last year's procedure, um, and if you agree, and I think we will discuss this later, um, it will be sent to all of you to read through and see uh, for your suggestions and amendments. So keeping in mind also as last year that we have a word limit so that if there are any changes you want to make, you need um, to add, then you need to subtract as well and not leave the burden to others. Um, and that, that word limit is utterly inviolable. Um, today I'd like to present just some general themes of this meeting. Um, although the report itself has to be organized according to the agenda items, so they, the themes won't come out as clearly as I think I would like um, the format to do. But I have to say that Mr. Shah has already done a far better job than I could um, in summarizing the themes that we've, you've already heard. Um, my first um, prefatory remark is it seems to me that the entire meeting was particularly rich in the sharing of our own experiences from our own countries, from our own knowledge, um, on various aspects of the agenda. We've also developed quite a number of what I hope will be useful suggestions for the Division of Public Administration and Development Management, both in what they are currently doing and on their strategic plans for the next years. How they, how they can do um, as we were told on the first day um, by Jomo representing Mr. Shah to do more or less, or how John Mary Kazia says, more with nothing, um, and how to refine their plans for the next years. The first theme um, of which dominated much of the week, it seemed to me, was conceptual. We spent quite a bit of time on these issues, but not because of the theoretical inclination of our members as experts, but because of the very real pragmatic considerations of how our terms such as governance, results, corruption, performance, participation, engagement are defined, measured, and thus implemented. First on the concept of governance. What is government, including public administration and development management, under the changing circumstances? We began with the document that Luis Aguilar present, um, provided for us in the beginning, um, and as Jan Ziakov summarized at the beginning of that session's discussion, it's now governance rather than government because government alone does not have the sufficient resources to act on its own, um, but also operates in a far more complex world, including the aspects of globalization that influence. Um, but as Jan Zierko added, public result, results are not only the outcomes, but an entire aggregation of policies over time. They are processes. And then we had much discussion about the role of, um, of interoperability and cooperation because, as Luis Aguilar's paper emphasized, the problem of fragmented responsibility in this new reality of governance. Meredith Edwards added the challenges that come from the new environment um, of vertical and horizontal relationships, cross-boundary relationships, the need for speedy response, which institutions are not always designed to do, the importance of expanding accountability, and what she called shared accountability. Pan Kim added that it's not only the environment that's affecting our understanding of governance, governments, but the budgetary pressures that lead for performance management under declining resources, but emphasized as well that performance management is just a tool, 
not an outcome. This generated enormous discussion about performance for what, to which I will return. Valeria Termini reminded us that this a way of summarizing the new concept of governance is a facilitating rather than hegemonic role. Also in the concept of governance, we discussed particularly what it means for post-conflict conditions and needs, and also for post-disaster conditions and needs, more generally in circumstances of environmental crisis due to climate change, public administration, policy, planning, and finance as we know them, will have to be radically and rapidly restructured to confront the challenges of repeated and successive disasters. The second conceptual issue was on results. What do we mean by performance management and by results? How should we measure results? Results for what? Mr. Shah has already said socially relevant, which I think most of us came to, but it was part of a discussion. Who should be measuring? Independent evaluations, and then we con was concerned, as S.K. Rao said, about the information that go into independent evaluations, public administration's professionalism itself, or citizens through open government. Um, we were warned of the delicate issue of indicators, the risks of certain kinds of evaluation and criteria, um, particularly the problem of good performance by the basis of pay for performance according to budgetary um, pressures, because as Valeria Termini reminded us, individual financial incentives are not enough. Um, alone they are inadequate. A positive social environment is necessary to professional and motivated civil servants. Um, Mikhail Dimitriev also reminded us that governance for results is an extremely capacity-consuming concept, so we must re um, consider it. And finally, there was much discussion about the problem of short-term measures for long-term goals, which are less easily measured under political constraints. There were other more specific concepts that also emerged during the discussion, um, much discussion on the concept of corruption and distinguishing mega, grand, petty, and silent. Discussions of professionalism. Do we mean impartiality or neutrality? What is the difference? What is the difference between technocratic and political accountability? Um, we discussed citizen engagement and, and insisted on a distinction between participation and engagement. And finally, in terms of concepts, we discussed change management and its relationship to emotional intelligence and emotion management. The second theme that came throughout the week um, was the importance of variation, not diversity, but variation, with recommendations to the division to incorporate more into their analysis, knowledge platforms, and advocacy, the distinctions among categories within which they are working, um, to in incorporate, in other words, more disaggregation explicitly. For example, the importance of varying social orders in which public administration takes place. Um, this emerged at first with the discussion of whether our models of public administration are based on wealthy and um, developed OECD countries and don't understand the political order um, that is more common in most developing countries. But we could extend this even among developed countries. A second differentiation, the concept of variation, was levels of income and resources and levels of state capacity. Third, in the discussion of poverty and of social protection, the importance of distinguishing levels of poverty, 8 to 10 percent, is not the same thing as 70 to 80 percent poverty. And fourth, the importance of, of looking at the qualitative reality behind quantitative data. The third theme was a set of substantive issues. I will only list them here, um, but you will remember because today we're going to talk for about the first most important one, that of social protection, particularly for vulnerable peoples. Secondly, the importance of education and training, um, as Mr. Shah has also mentioned already, 
first in performance-oriented criteria, in civic values, that um, civil servants are not there are there for the service of others, not just for job security, um, training for professionalism, but also training public administrators at the highest levels of how to negotiate with external actors, such as the donors, or the WTO, or the World Bank, and on the need to focus on socially valuable or useful outcomes in performance management. Um, the f next substantive theme was on the knowledge platform that the division provides and discussions about the way in which United Nations documentation, particularly through that vehicle, could be supplemented. Um, this was especially a, a discussion from on the public service awards, the way in which they should not simply be a competition and an event, but a process of disseminating the innovations that are being awarded and rewarded by those awards, particularly, for example, in case studies utilized in universities and case studies that should influence capacity building and training by the division. Um, and finally, on, non on the knowledge platform, we emphasized, as I mentioned before, not just to gather quantitative data, even though that um, works very nicely in e-platforms, but to go behind it and think about the qualitative analysis those data should be at leading us to ask. The next substantive theme was the role of advocacy for the division and a particular emphasis from the members to be attuned to the messages that are sent when advocacy takes place. I'll only mention two. One, that e-government has gotten almost a bad reputation as electronic government or the internet, whereas in fact it means government and it means empowerment. Um, and so, and Walter Fust added that we should now at least start to talk about M government because most people use cell phones, not the computer. And second set of messages, um, this was a particularly important to Odette Ramsing and Rowena Battelle, that governments now in the age of the internet, citizens can look and see what ideals look like, what best practices look like, and pressure the governments who may not have the capacities however much they have the goodwill, um, to do what citizens see being done elsewhere. So in promoting best practices, um, good, even good options, don't give the message that this is um, available to all, that it's perfect, but to understand and um, perhaps work with governments of how uh, to move towards um, small but necessary incremental improvements and resist some of those pressures. Finally, we discussed substantively a number of interrelationships among issues within DESA and ECOSOC more generally. For example, the important relationship between, um, inf between find my, my notes here, health and poverty, um, between completely lost it. So I'll, I'll give you that example and, and come and back to it later. And, and the final theme was the still um, sad neglect of public administration in poverty eradication because the origins of that agenda, it was said, began with the World Bank, which does not put much effort on public administration. Um, even though poverty eradicate, public administration is essential to social protection, the ne neglect of public administration in post-conflict um, analyses and capacity building, and even the neglect in some ways of public administration in the Millennium Development Goals. And that's my report to the committee. Thank you very much.